update on what's been happening with the uh, the megaphone so uh, i think most of you are probably aware of the uh, uh, the mega 65 so this is the full uh, desktop 8-bit computer that we're building uh, but as some of you might be aware and some of you maybe not uh, we also have a handheld version uh, that we've been working on for a little while so uh, if i hop across let's hold it here in front so this is a prototype that we built um, two or three years ago I reckon now uh, so we had some student projects and things working on this with me uh, and more recently we've had support from the NLNet Foundation uh, for this and their support actually is quite interesting it's because we've been looking to make a, uh, a phone like device uh, that's quite secure uh, that can really do proper end-to-end -end encryption uh, in a way that you can't do on a, a modern phone now where the uh, you know the phone can get compromised uh, by even a, a you know the dodgy network one of the um you know, like a, a stingray device for example uh, or, or a corrupt government uh, and so the idea of the megaphone is to be amongst other things uh, you know reasonably resilient against that kind of thing so uh, you can see at the, the moment the, the size of the prototypes is about the size of a, a nintendo switch it's kind of cool that we're getting nice rainbow reflection uh, I guess it's from the fluorescent light that's cool um, it's obviously it's a bit thicker than that because this is what we can kind of easily make uh, you know uh, in a, a fairly affordable way uh, we've got a, a filthy great big 32 watt hour battery in here so it's about the size of a typical laptop battery now in fact uh, and this earlier prototype uh, a few other weird things we had a smart card reader because we actually realized we could probably use this as a, um, uh, a uh, like an FPOST uh, bank terminal uh, point of sales um, VGA output uh, so both of those are changing on the next uh, revision the next revision will have a digital video output uh, so we have a smaller connector than that uh, and the uh, smart card is going because there's actually going to be a bay there that can take uh, a Raspberry Pi compute module and the reason for that uh, is so that we can have uh, Android apps for example running but in a ship in a bottle on the compute module and so the 8-bit uh, machine is actually in charge of the whole thing and it can actually cut the power in fact to the uh, the compute module if it wants to uh, so you can go right okay I need to have Android for something for a while and then you can just cut the power to it and be confident that it's not uh, you know going to be compromising the rest of the device because uh, the 8-bit system is much smaller so in theory it's much easier to uh, to you know to secure that smaller attack surface and so that's again kind of one of the, uh, the ideas around it um, while we're looking at the top so we've got a, a barrel uh, uh, power input connector we'll hopefully change that for a USB-C on the next revision uh, and we've got three and a half mil audio jack because that's just sensible to have uh, and here is a little bit hard to see um, these are little uh, power switches uh, and we'll talk about the uh, the power switches a bit more in a moment as well but they're used for um, uh, uh, being able to cut the power to different modules so for example like with the uh, the Pi compute module there'll actually be a switch that you can actually physically make sure that it can't get powered on uh, even if the FPGA for the Mega 65 part of it wanted to um, so back to the front for a moment so we've got uh, you know uh, d-pad type controllers and buttons so it's kind of it's quite nice and again for adult hands you know, it's kind of uh, Nintendo switch size it works uh, you know it's quite uh, nice to use there's these little tiny buttons down here that we had uh, that were uh, doing various functions we're actually getting rid of those we're just going to have uh, these larger friendlier uh, buttons we just buy these cheap uh, from China they're you know, PCB uh, contact with the uh, uh, the carbonized rubber uh, bits in there and then if we have a look on the bottom here uh, we have of course a 9-pin joystick port so if you don't want to use the uh, things on the top uh, you could you know have yourself a uh, uh, you know, uh, a nice proper joystick uh, and you could use that you know to play games while you're out and about and again because it's got the uh, the digital video out on the next revision as well or the VGA out on this one um, you could in fact actually kind of use it as a, a portable uh, mega 65 uh, game system uh, and as we get the the different cores that support different platforms on the uh, the mega 65 they'll also get ported to this uh, so it'll be quite a, a nice uh, device to use 
uh, in that regard as well. So um, we looked at the top, we looked at the bottom. Uh, on this edge, we've got uh, more power switches for more of the subsystems. Uh, and two of those are actually for the cellular modem base. Because again, it's also supposed to be a phone. Uh, so it's a little bit hard to see in from the edge in there, but there's actually two industry standard M.2 uh, communication space, one kind of here and one sort of in behind here. Uh, and so you can put a, uh, you know, for example, a, a 4G uh, modem uh, in there or a 5G modem in fact, you can have a 5G Mega 65 if you want, but you can have a dual 5G Mega 65 uh, if you really want to. Uh, so, yeah, and there's also, uh, there's UHF packet radios in here. So you might not just be able to see, no, it's the, it's the Bluetooth chip here that you can actually see. So we'll support Bluetooth as well. Uh, but there's a couple of LoRa radio modules in there as well. We're gonna uh, change those for a different type and actually have them on a pluggable board so that you can uh, remove and replace them. So that, you know, it will be quite modular. And again, open hardware, FPGA based, open source, uh, the whole uh, kit and caboodle uh, with that as well. So. Um, yeah, that's the, uh, uh, the hardware overview, but probably what you might like to see if you're a Mega 65 fan is uh, with the highly sophisticated prototype uh, power cut switch uh, to the whole thing. If I pop that down there for a moment, and if I give that juice, and it does this sometimes, this is where the, the power hasn't come on in quite the right way possible that the poor old battery is actually going flat in here as well, but I think it might be because it's been sitting on a shelf for ages. Um, that's quite frustrating because it was nicely letting me show off the, uh, you know, the, you know, what you all know well from here, the, uh, you know, the, the standard uh, C65 uh, startup screen. Uh, so it would go through that whole uh, kind of sequence might just give it one more go in the possibly vain hope that it will uh, have just decide to work this time. Oh, look at that, it is. So you can see there, if I bring that up to the camera a little bit more, you can see it is exactly what we have. On this one, it's a little bit offset. We've, we, we know how to, uh, to recenter that uh, correctly, but it's a little itty bitty portable Mega 65. Uh, and so, yeah, this is uh, really a, a side project of what we're doing. It's not uh, taking up time and effort that's going into the uh, the Mega 65 at the moment. As I say, it's being funded by Internet Foundation. And so the work that's been going on uh, of late uh, is actually on doing the next revision of the, uh, the motherboard for it. So uh, we want to, as I say, there's a few things we needed to fix. Uh, that's actually, the one that I showed you is actually two revisions old. We've actually got a newer revision uh, board that we kind of had to make physically bigger to deal with some problems with the uh, the VGA connector and things and the joystick connector. Uh, and so we, uh, we've we dealt with those. Uh, and the new ones also we're going to, we need to uh, adjust the connector for the screen. So actually today, uh, I've just got a delivery from uh, our supplier uh, in China, KingTech, uh, who source all sorts of nice LCD panels. The LCD panel that we're using is purposely a very standard size panel that's used in all sorts of things. And so we can get them at a good price. They're 800 by 480. Uh, so we can do uh, the Mega 65 resolution quite well. And uh, one thing we found though is that the, in the, the different variants of these screens, the uh, ribbon connectors and things are end up in all different places. So we've had to order in some of the samples of the type of screen that we want to use, which I'm just unwrapping now. They've literally just arrived by courier uh, earlier today. Uh, and so here's the actual screen module. Uh, so it's still got the protective film uh, on the, uh, the front there. I'll leave that on there for the moment. And you can see here, so this is the, uh, the ribbon Connector. So the mother, the uh, circuit board has a slot in it. I don't think I've got a. I used to have a, a bare PCB uh, laying around it, so you could actually see where that would slot through the board. Um, and then the big nuisance we have is that the capacitive touch 
interface um, has a separate cable that comes down on the side. Now this one I think is actually resistive because we actually asked for one sample of their resistive to see what the, uh, the touch pressure is on their resistive because um, there are actually some quite good resistive screens that you can get now and they do have the advantage that they work when your hands are cold and wet uh, whereas with capacitive that's not as reliable. So we, we've got one sample uh, to test that with and everything that I've got here with these we've also uh, got sent to the, uh, the guy in Slovenia um, Goran, uh, who's doing great work on the PCB. So open up another one. This should be one of the capacitive ones, which should have that extra connector uh, that you'll get to see. <laughs> and hello, LGB. Is right. I won't tell anyone that you're uh, you're secretly watching. Okay. So, ah, oh, this is interesting. So the capacitive ones actually come with a different <coughs> film on them as well. So again, it's still I'm not sure you can see. There's a, a tab here. I can peel that back. Um, and there's our same ribbon as I'm actually have to lay that there. You can see that. And so this extra one here, this is the capacitive touch interface. And so that's the one that we need to line up the connector with. And so this is on the uh, the past prototypes. There's been a um, uh, a bit of a pain in the backside to uh, uh, to get right. So here's the resistive one. You can see it's largely the same thing. I'm actually we'll just peel off that front on this one. So the appearance is different. Ah, okay, so you can actually see here. I'm not sure if I bring it into the camera a little bit closer in a moment, you'll actually be able to see that the uh, the resistive one has again compared look at the capacitive one for a moment. So there's our extra cable for the capacitive one. And if I tip that on its side, you can actually see that that cable comes from the front because there is this capacitive uh, digitizer, they call them. Uh, and then the common 40 pin connector, which has got this unpopulated pins reserved in the 40 pin connector uh, to have a, a touch digitizer. Now on the resistive one, we don't have an extra cable because we don't need it because we have here the extra cable that comes down. Again, you can see from the side profile that, that comes in from the top where the resistive touch uh, sensor is on the front and feeds in. So I've never actually controlled one of these resistive ones before from an FPGA. So that will, when we get to that point, that will be quite interesting to, uh, uh, to look at. Uh, yeah, and so it'll be interesting to see how well that works. Because one issue we had previous screens, and part of the reason we're looking to get different ones, there was two issues with them. Uh, one was that whilst they're quite bright, uh, for outdoor use, we really wanted even brighter. Uh, so I've, I live in Australia, uh, and so absurdly bright maximum brightness. We can control the brightness uh, already on the, um, uh, the megaphone, with, um, but they weren't as bright. So I think there were four or 500 lumens new ones are meant to be a thousand lumens so these should be really really bright which will be fantastic so i'm looking forward uh, to trying that at some point um, and the other issue we had was that the capacitive touch panels i think were actually two half ones and there's a junction down the middle we have really poor horizontal uh, resolution in that middle section uh, so we we're keen to see that uh, remedied as well so we'll see whether these this different uh, brand with a slightly different uh, touch digitizer, whether they still have that problem or not. Uh, but we'll also, we'll try the resistive one. And if the resistive one actually works fine, and if it doesn't require too much pressure, then maybe we'll actually do them with resistive uh, and not have that issue. Uh, so yeah, we've, we've got options to, uh, uh, to look at. So uh, the next step will be for Goran to uh, hopefully he'll be getting these uh, very soon as well. They've come a little bit faster to Australia because we're closer to China. Uh, so it might be another week or so before uh, Goran uh, gets uh, his arrived. And then we can do the measuring up and we can finalize uh, any changes to the circuit board needed for that and uh, send off some boards for manufacture and uh, then have some samples to, uh, to play around with of a newer board revision that will hopefully have all of the errata and everything from the older revisions of the boards uh, fixed because there is on it you can't really see it where it's all strapped together on the other but there's blue wire and, and there's a whole extra little uh, adapter circuit board we had to do to fix problems and uh, and things in there so yeah um, 
so that's pretty much it. Uh, really, the things that I wanted to cover that you know we've uh, got this thing bubbling away in the background. Uh, the focus really is on getting the the desktop Mega 65 out, uh, but I just thought I'd let you folks know what's uh, going on uh, and what our uh, you know with the, the support of Internet that we've we've been able to scurry away on. Uh, there in the background a little bit, with, in particular with the help of Goran, who's really been uh, doing the bulk of this PCB work while we get on with all sorts of other bits and pieces. So, yeah, uh, I hope that was interesting, and uh, we'll uh, catch you around. <laughs>